Weald Museum is an ancient village dating back through the centuries to include an Anglo-Saxon house, a 17th century water mill and a Tudor kitchen amongst its 50 or so ancient buildings. Yet it did not exist half a century ago. Buildings from all over the South East England were lovingly dismantled, every piece labelled, transported to Weald and painstakingly rebuilt. Weald's wide range of buildings with displays and demonstrations can easily absorb the whole visit, but there is a bonus this time, a living history festival. We will meet all sorts of characters with a passionate interest in their individual pieces of history. Some may seem a little odd, but they have uh, two things in common, the ability to keep talking and a lovely sense of humour. While we're here, let's have a quick look at the water mill. This was located in Lugwishaw and the basic structure probably dates from the 17th century. The overshot water wheel powers two pairs of millstones, a grain cleaner and a sack hoist. As there is no natural mill stream at Weald, an upper water pond was built and a powerful pump used to recirculate the water. Like most mills, it has many changes and alterations in its long life up to the 1930s when it stopped working. Just put your hand up there. And now that, this horse and rider are new to this game. This is the first event that they've been with us. And Ollie is a former serviceman of Royal Logistics Corps who served in Iraq. Um, and he's joining us here today for the first time to have the experience of joining the Yeomanry. Uh, he lives not too far away from me in Cham. I'll go to the other chap on the far side, which is, um, excuse me, Matt Palmer. Now, Matt Palmer is dressed as an officer, junior officer of the lifeguards. <laughs> there is no drone. Um, well, okay, that tune actually is one of the few tunes where I actually do use a drone. But because on each hand I've got two notes that are exactly the same two D's, two low D's, and two G's. So if the tune demands a G drone or a D drone, I can still get the effect. So all all life is here. All life is here. And I can design one for yourselves if you like. Favorite charity. Or one that could represent all the others. For him. And one four four seven. And the, do sit down in comfort if you will. And the surname is Holden. Holden. Yes. H O L D E N. Well enough. Now, what does Master Holden do? What's his profession? What's Daddy's job? He's a train manager. A what? A train manager. He works for Southern Railway. Oh. <laughs> don't hold it against him. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand such things at all. <laughs> well, not a great deal, though. He likes to think he talks French, well, if he works but he for the doesn't railways, really. Like he speaks invective as well. <laughs> <laughs> No, he doesn't really have another language. No, it matters not. Does he play a particular sport? Cricket. Actually, Venice. Yeah. But um, yeah. what she's doing, uh, she's 15th century, so if she yeah. was in a position to have the disposable income, yeah. by them, she could get them from a uh, peddler in the streets. They're, they're just haberdashers, the probate records for haberdashers show they got them. Uh, merchants uh, sell them. Oh. They're basically reading yeah. glasses. Yeah. So a little like you can go to a supermarket yeah. and just try them on now. Yeah. You can do the same. And they move. This is a just a style. These are uh, late 13th century replicas. No. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, basically, two magnifying glasses riveted. Yeah. yeah. The original actually had three. Yeah. So you're you're oh, talking like hard yeah. shine. Yeah. 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 Well, no, because they've actually they've actually got curves yeah. in, in the plane. Around about 64. 
if you know what you're doing, yeah. 64 plants out of a really good oak tree, but it's got to be a really good oak tree. Yeah, sure. um, by the end yeah. of the Middle Ages, they've cut down all the really. They were looking around for trees to build the um, build the build the first ships out of, um, and they got a, a phone call from the Danish Navy because apparently what had happened was that all the trees that had been planted in uh, at the beginning of the 19th century to replace the boats that Nelson had sunk at the Battle of Copenhagen <laughs> were now ready for being ready to be felled. And for some reason, the Danish know he didn't need them anymore. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Martin said to his man, my man, my Martin said to his man, who's the fool now? Martin said to his man, fill out the cup and I the can. Thou hast well drunken man, who's the fool now? I saw the man in the moon. Well, it's when we first got the buckets, um, I've tried it without a shawl and I put the bruise on the back of my neck. I'm not surprised. So you, you've got to have the shawl. You know, have some safety. Industrial after clothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have some safety. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but after, I mean, I do two days for the weekend, I do four days when we do Greenwich. It's, it's a good way of carrying heavy weights around. Mm. But I don't think the yoke will take the full. So what year are you? 1851. Victoria. 26th of My general practices would be uh, if a damaged finger or toe had happened, I would take my implement called the nippers and nip off, cleanse in the end, and then bandage in to stop any infection from the miasma those in the air. That would be one practice. Um, on campaign they may have not had a good diet so they may have a blockage in their firmament to which I would apply hog's grease to the end, fill with sour wine or old ale and remove the blockage. So so yeah, I, I think it's even heavier than usual. Something looks dangerous. It's a hand and a half, it's beautifully balanced. Sword held with, as I say, hand and a half. It does what it says on the lid. One hand there, one hand there. So you can lever. So all I have to do is just pivot about that point and then if I just do that, yeah, you'll see the stop. Not my wife, somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> it probably matters though. <laughs> yes. Other practices would be um, perhaps you have spent too long in the ale house and have been led astray by the wanton women and have caught the French pox. But you come to me in agony shortly after going, I have a pain in my cod and stones, which I would say. Have you been struck by the arrows of Venus? Which you would confess you had. And I would say there is only one cure, and that is a shot from Mercury to the point of entry. Handle your piece. Cock your match. <laughs> Try your match. The musketeers will now mount the match cord in the lock of the gun and check that when they pull the trigger the match will fall into the pan. Stand! They're all loaded. Form yourselves into a single rank.
your enemies 4%. Open your pans. Get fire. Uh, but the worst thing I would be called to do would be um, if someone's limb had become morbid. Essence, um, to remove an arm, it was recommended that it took much less than two minutes. Um, three assistants would be used. One would be supporting, uh, another one would be holding the arm and pulling tight, and the other one would be pulling the... I would tourniquet across as tight as I could. I would take a catnip knife, which is a curved knife, which I'm searching for somewhere in here, which looks remarkably now like another knife, which you would know. Catnip, like a cat slip. I would cut for as quick as I could down to the bone. As the flesh is pulled back, the bone is exposed. I take the saw. I saw as rapidly through as I can. If I can't, articulate a joint and cut through that way so the, mu the marrow is exposed i pull the flesh back over i would probably use wound staples push through the flesh and wrap twine round cover it over not with pitch only in the navy do they use pitch to keep the Well, we've come to the end of a fascinating day and now it's time for all of us to start off home and return to the 21st century.